So I will call this meeting to order. Wednesday, May 24th, 7 o'clock, Cannabis Subcommittee meeting. Um, roll call starting on the left. Uh, June Gagney. John Mark. Carla Stardens. Lindsay Jocelyn. Mary Ann Chinati. Brian Bray. All right. So we do have a quorum. There are no alternates to appoint. Um, so moving on to our new business, which is the discussion regarding <coughs> cannabis regulation. Um, so we have draft regulations. We have a lovely spreadsheet of um, the research that's been done regarding towns and where they stand on how they're proceeding. Um, Marianne, did you want to give a summary? Yeah, real quick. First, regarding the spreadsheet, mm -hmm. uh, I did get a phone call from the Windsor Locks Town Planner late this morning and they have finally adopted regulations. She did not get them to me in time for me to revise the spreadsheet to say how they're regulating it. Um, and she also was gonna let me know the effective date because she couldn't remember that off the top of her head. Um, so we're still waiting on that information, but Windsor Locks is no more under a moratorium. Okay. And the hard copy of the permissive regulations that was on the table tonight has been modified since your email version. Um, the deputy chief added suggested addition of some language regarding the traffic study. Um, and also the sections for the special permit have been renumbered because of the recent adopt revisions to the regulations change those numbers. And there are some items in red that the commission may wish to discuss um, before finalizing a draft for public hearing. So where we last left off was the committee wanted some more time and information um, to determine whether we wanted to do nothing. So just allow cannabis use under the regulations as they are. Or we can prohibit all cannabis operations, or we can regulate them, and we could do a, a mix where we prohibit one type of cannabis operation like retail, but then allow manufacturing or um, growth. Um, so I believe we further defined each of those in the, the draft here. All right. So is there any items that you want to review or discuss in more detail? What direction you want? So whatever we do, it would be presented to the full committee in draft form. Yeah. One thing uh, to add, I did uh, revise in the um, commercial district to allow manufacture of edibles, mm -hmm. which I'd like the commission to discuss because frankly, when I think about manufacturing edibles, I think about a bakery, but that's, that's the way I, my mind goes. Right, um, so, so really the baking and the retail happen in the same building because... Well, not even necessarily happen in the same building, right. but just be, being able to manufacture the edibles. I didn't include the beverages because with beverage manufacture, you have more of a mechanical machine you know, conveyor belts and cappers and, and whatnot. Mm. And I'm correct that the licensing itself has limitations, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So it has to be on state roads, right? That's what the regulations say. Did they modify to change how many operations per town? Unlimited. Unlimited now. Okay. Used to be one per twenty-five thousand. That that limit they, they removed. Okay. I thought there was a like a certain number of licenses given out. At the state level, they do have a, a number of licenses. They have a cap. Okay. Um, but for example, if you want to come into Plainfield and you have a license, you have okay. seven licenses. Okay. You could do seven establishments. Okay. So not anybody who wants to open up a, uh, a marijuana shop can. They have to have already gotten a license from the state and then find a town that's... Well, that's one of the uh, requirements in the regulations as part of uh, the permission.
application for the special permit, they have to provide proof that they have um, state approval. State approval. Okay. Mayor Andy, you know how that, <coughs> uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Parallels like the, uh, like the liquor store licenses. Is there a cap on liquor store licenses in this thing? Per town. Hmm. Per town, but I mean, in total? I guess at some point there would be this at all you mean towns. Total, yeah, exactly. The total, however many each town has, mm -hmm. you add it up and that's the total max for the state. Okay. Do you mean, do the liquor licenses, are they regulated in the same way the marijuana licenses? At least in some degree. Yeah, yeah like, because Connecticut gave up, what did we just say, 20,000 marijuana licenses or something? I don't know what the number is. Okay, was. so do they do the same thing with liquor licenses? Many years ago they did. Many years ago, but not now. Yeah. Well, so they, they actually started putting a cap on the licenses after liquor stores were already established. Oh, okay. Um, and in most cases, the, the cap was less than the number of liquor stores that were in town. So what you have is all you have. You'd have to buy a, an existing patch store in order to have their license. Oh, okay. Now, we as a town could limit the number of operations in town. We just say, you know, oh, we just want to have one manufacturer and that's it. Can we put that much of a limit? I don't know if we... I mean, there's a town here that only one Berlin. Yeah. They have special permits. <coughs> yeah, there are some, some municipalities that have instituted a maximum allowed. But I still see a lot of peas here. You know, it's prohibited still in a yeah. lot of places. Yeah. And I don't think we've had enough time to see what our neighbors are doing and what they're, they're, how they're experiencing retail or whatever. I, mean, I don't think we've given it enough time to prepare. I'm not ready for amendments. I'm not ready to. What is the, um, I guess let's compare again liquor store and I guess I'm just going to call it cannabis store for the meantime. What is the incentive for the town? So is it a similar tax intake or is it taxed differently? It taxes, uh, you, the town receives a 3% tax, but that tax money has to be used for improvements to the area where the cannabis establishment is located specifically. How many feet around the cannabis store? So, like, uh, does that mean like the store next door, or the or the property? Or? No. For example, if, if um, you do streetscape improvements okay. or parking lots, just to the cannabis store, store, though. No, in that area, in that okay. vicinity. Is there like a, a distance? No. So there's no radius or anything. The no. state left it open and we just said in the in the area. So we could say. Yeah. We would like to use that tax money for. Well, that would be outside our scope. Oh, okay. Yeah. So That's we okay. would have no ability to direct the tax impact, and oh, we okay. actually—that's not one of our criteria to consider tax impact. Oh. So okay. when we're thinking about do we want to allow this or not, we have to come at it from a plan of conservation and development. Does it fit our plan of conservation and development framework? Then we have to look at is it a use that we want to allow in town, and then where would we want to allow it? Um, so we're really looking at this from a land use issue, not a tax base issue, because that is really for other, you know, Economic Development Commission, Board of Selectmen, that's, All right. that's their role. Ours is, is this a use we want to allow, and if so, where and how? Does that capture it, hopefully? Mm -hmm. Okay. Our, our purview, or our scope would be uh, traffic, Yes. And how that's going to affect the neighborhood. Yep. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. So obviously that's not as part of the proposal. Um, but it would be looking at if we determine to allow um, commercial zones, industrial zones, um, and setting the parameters of the wares in the house. And the special permit. Correct. And then, like I said, we could put a cap on the number of establishments allowed. So we can restrict in that in that aspect. And again, what was the number? Was it seven in the town, or 
registered. Seven. Establishments or something in this No, that was just an example that I gave. Okay. With licenses compared to establishments. <coughs> So we heard from June that she's not ready to put forward a text amendment to the full commission yet. Um, John and Lindsay, do you have any points of discussion of where you feel we are in the process and if you want to move something forward to the full commission for review or if you, you know, want to continue to review the regulations, maybe determine if we want, if we allow that we put a cap on it. Um, and then the, the other option is prohibition. So if the subcommittee wanted to recommend complete prohibition, so no retail, no growth, no manufacturing, no cannabis operation in town, then you, we could propose that to the full commission. The commission would then um, have to schedule a public hearing. And then in the public hearing process, the public would have the opportunity to weigh in. And then the commission would either vote to um, adopt the prohibition or not. And then if you were leaning more towards allowing, you know, looking at this draft and determining would you want to allow all possible uses, so retail, manufacturing, growth, as well as like hybrid retail, um, or you can prohibit part and allow others. So, I mean, there's a lot of different avenues we can go. I think from the last meeting, we all agree we do not want to let it come in under regular regulations, that we do want special regulations for this, and that's why we have the moratorium. So that way, no one can just come in under current regulation. The moratorium just kind of holds them back so that we can uh, make this decision. Yeah, um, I'm curious about what, I'm, I'm, I love a public hearing just because I'm curious about what everybody thinks and feels. Mm -hmm. um, do we have to do anything until then? I mean, can you have a public hearing where you so we would have to present something for the public to hear about. Yeah. So in order to have a public hearing on the topic, we would have to have a draft regulation for the public to review. We did have something, didn't we? We had like some people came and spoke. Oh, really? In the beginning. Mm, we had a public comment where mm -hmm. some people had, because yeah, like comment. there was a um, there was a gentleman who right. is interested in having yes. cannabis manufacturing. Mm -hmm. So he, during public comment, said, Hey, if you do this, I'm ready. I think he knew where we were. Yeah, exactly. So, so there were some people who, during public <coughs> comment, had just made comments. That's why incorporation seemed to be a good idea. To me. <laughs> you know, but if you could limit it just to that one, mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I, I would. I kind of like the idea of presenting an option and then being able, based on, I mean, it just. Um, I'd be very interested to hear at the public hearing what people think, you know, what they want, um, and then being able to perhaps go back and change it. Um, I like, uh, yeah, I think that's... Well, we could take and present regulations that we have tonight. If we, if we go through and see what the commission likes and doesn't, we can present it as mm -hmm. regulating with this text, prohibiting outright, or prohibiting in part. And that way we have all options on the table for that public hearing and the commission gets to determine what they're going to do. So would they be separate applications then? And then no. the one commission would withdraw or strike? One application with different proposals within that application. I like that idea. I think that's a great idea. Because that leaves it open. You see, the problem is if you, if you come up with text to go to public hearing, and at the public hearing, you say, you know what? We don't like this text. We want to take a prohibit it instead. You don't have that option because you didn't advertise as prohibited. Okay. So can you just repeat that? Present regulating with this text. What were the other two options? One was prohibited. Prohibit entirely or prohibit in part. So 
you can pick and choose what you want to throw out. So you would present those three options at the public hearing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that idea. <clears throat> so then we just have to make it clear that the entire proposal would not be adopted because it would conflict with each other. So during the public hearing, does that be substantive change, right? Mm -hmm. So we would be making, so in all likelihood, the public hearing would probably be continued mm -hmm. to make modifications so that a final text would be presented to the public. <coughs> okay. Right. So <coughs> staff agrees that that is the way to go? The way that it's advertised is the issue. Mm -hmm. So you have to make sure that you have that prohibition in the advertisement as well as the text mm -hmm. and have that all on file in the clerk's office for people to review. Okay. Because that way, if you wanted to, for example, please correct me if I'm wrong, go into a certain category but allow others, you could make some match. Yes. And then you could also, I guess at that point, set a number of different kinds of facilities. So if you're going to prohibit in part, mm. you don't need to decide tonight what you're not going to include. Because we can modify the text, continue yeah. the public hearing, and then present a final draft for <coughs> adoption. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then we can ask for and give ourselves an extension if needed. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I love that too. <laughs> <coughs> yeah. With a commission application, you don't have a time limit. Yeah, there's no... Okay. The only, the only <coughs> time limit is the 12 month extension. I like that idea because it gives the public a lot of input into what yes. you know, we do as opposed to us presuming something. Right. Sure. Yeah. And so the application would be presented at our June meeting. The public hearing would be scheduled for July. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So looking at the text, <clears throat> if we were to put a cap on the number of um, <clears throat> number of facilities, where would that best fit? I think you'd probably want to first maybe determine what the types of facilities you would allow mm -hmm. and put the cap on those. Or if you want to allow all of them, then you put the cap on each. Mm -hmm. So then just to look at a couple of the, in the draft, uh, a couple of the uh, red <coughs> highlighted um, questions. Um, so do we wish to limit the size of the manufacturing area? <coughs> do we have a limit on manufacturing area in any of the other zones for any of the other uses? No. Okay. Would there be a benefit in limiting the size of the manufacturing area if, for example, it was a, an edible manufacturer mm -hmm. in a commercial zone, yeah. you don't want that at the magnitude it would be allowed in the industrial zone. Okay. Yeah. So there'd be a differentiation between commercial and industrial based on size. That makes sense. <clears throat> kind of the difference between uh, the local bakery and uh, Frito Lay. Yeah. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. So, thinking about our commercial <coughs> zone, is there a suggested size that would be kind of the tipping point of sending it to industrial versus commercial? Good question. Mm -hmm. 5,000 square feet. Max. Would be Max. industrial Max. or commercial? No, or commercial. So then once it exceeds that, you got to be industrial. Yeah. Okay. If we could modify the draft to include that language, I think that would be, that would be good. Um, so is it 5,000? Yeah, yes. commercial is 5,000 max, and industrial would be plus 5,000. Yeah. All right. 
So, do we wish to limit the size of the production area? <clears throat> and this is under the cannabis producer. So it's on page two of the um, regulation draft. Yep. You're talking industrial areas? So this is in the definitions of cannabis producer? Yeah, that's allowed in the industrial zone. Okay. I don't really see the benefit to putting a cap within the industrial zone. Well, size of production area versus storage area, is that what the intent is? Because obviously if they're producing... You're going to have storage if you're a producer. Yeah. So I think it's all going to be a one building. So I don't really see a need to regulate the size. Yeah, and like, you know, as Ryan said, other uh, production facilities aren't limited. In okay. Limited. So, so then we won't worry about that one. Okay. I think we'd be open that up ourselves. Sure. All right. So the um, red line where it says for clarification. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the products would be further defined. Well, that's just an example. Okay. Those are just examples so that product, you understand okay. what product means. Oh, okay. got it. Okay. That would not be part of the regulation. Okay. That's just for your information. And then police, fire, they've all weighed in mm -hmm. on, on their parts. Yep. Okay. Are we have to phase three yet? If you have something you want to point out, feel free. Um, on A, uh, with, the, with the security plan, I was just looking that over. Um, it says the commission may at the expense of the applicant engage a security consultant to review the plan and make recommendations to the commission. Um, security plan, that's pretty standard for most towns, but I don't know if we really need to have a security expert go over it. The, um, the state does regulate that pretty, pretty tightly. That was recommended when we had the meeting with um, the police. And gotcha. Fire. And I do remember that. Yeah. And okay. the language yeah. says may. <coughs> So that, exactly. that gives you a right, so it gives us a level of discretion because obviously if they're going right next to the police department, then perhaps they're not as worried about it than if it was in another area of town. And I would assume that if a company came in, you know, the police fired, they're all going to oh, give absolutely. feedback absolutely. on the plan. Um, yeah, I think because the may is there and it's not a shall, I, I think I'd leave it under the recommendation of the police department. And on page four on item E, that's where <clears throat> the deputy chief made the comment to add um, the last sentence, this study shall be permitted to submit it to the local traffic authority for review and, and approval. Mm -hmm. Did you meet with the police? When these were first crafted, yes. Okay. And I did subsequently um, I was get, curious. The, get the device passed yes. over to um, Deputy Chief Wolberg, Wolfberg for his comments mm -hmm. on the revisions. You probably knew they were going to be asked. I mean, they, in all the towns, mm -hmm. they have to address <clears throat> their part in this. I have a few suggestions on page four. Mm -hmm. um, IV number four, uh, detailed plan for the proper storage uh, and potential containment. And I wanted to add in disposal. Oh, good point. Because if they have spoiled which product, line, right? um, at the very top of four, um, I do. Oh, okay. Thanks. So add disposal into there to make sure they have a plan for proper disposal. Um, and where it says substances and materials, uh, I wanted to add including byproducts. Mm -hmm. Good point. <coughs> Yeah, because <clears throat> one thing, the, uh, the waste generated by one of these facilities may not necessarily be considered hazardous. 
it's substantial, the waste that's produced. But it could be, you know, more like a medical waste or pharmaceutical waste or something like that because it does have the... Mm -hmm. Well, it's really, it's, it's the pulp and everything left over after they make the product. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, the, the Franklin Mushroom Farm, the, the problem that they had there is that they had so much compost that you, anybody within a couple mile radius would actually get nauseous leaving mm -hmm. the house because mm -hmm. of the smell. And so, on a large just, scale facility, we <coughs> want to make sure they have a plan in place to get rid of it. Yeah, my, uh, my concern on that one, this is uh, section, uh, is it four? Yeah, is that it may not necessarily be a hazardous waste, but it would be a, maybe a, a regulated waste, or you know, to include hazardous waste, because hazardous waste is pretty limited. So what would you suggest changing it to in um, disposal of all wastes, including hazardous wastes? Is that what you're saying? Well, yeah. wouldn't Brian capture that where he said byproduct or? Yeah, after materials in the second line, just including byproducts, just to throw it in there that anything left over from the manufacturing process. So potential containment and disposal of all hazardous waste, substances and materials, including byproducts, shall be included as part of the application. It gets a bit farther along the line anyway. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then maybe I skimmed over it, but is there a line that says outdoor growing is prohibited? I have that suggested. Okay, no one that today has 12.49.8 on page 7. So, underneath cannabis cultivation should not be permitted in any residence in any zoning district. Yep. Um, and then add a point eight outdoor cultivation of cannabis is prohibited in all zone in all zoning districts. Okay. Um, so, proposing adding that. So, on outdoor. page 7. Prohibited? Yeah. Okay. Right. So I see 1249 subs. It's not page. And, and actually, you know what, on page five, and maybe this captures it, but perhaps it's clearer to make it a strict prohibition. But on page five, under item D, it says all sales, growing, production, manufacture, and storage of cannabis shall be conducted indoors. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so does that capture, or should we just straight out say outdoor growing is prohibited? Well, this D says outdoor growing is prohibited. Yeah. It does? My yeah. Yeah. No. no, I mean... Well, it says shall be conducted it. indoors. Right, so what I'm saying is, should it be more blatant? I don't think so. Uh, I think D captures it. Okay, perfect. So, uh, so I'm just curious about this part. I'm curious about two parts. It just may just be a lack of understanding. So, why can't you grow it outdoors? When you have a large scale growing operation, it creates a lot of odor. Right. Okay. Like the hemp that they grew. Mm -hmm. Yes. So okay. there were lots of neighbor complaints about yes. hemp. And hemp, my understanding of hemp, Different. is that it's less smelly than oh, some wow. of the other brands of cannabis. Yeah. Right. So I think early on, we had talked about, you know, in order to contain the odor, yeah. it really had to be indoor operations only. Mm -hmm. um, if they are able to modify the smell, so eventually they're going to create a product that doesn't smell for genetic yeah. growing. Yeah. Does that something that we're stuck with, or could we? Oh no, no but my, your regulations, regulations can, can be, always be modified. Okay. Yeah. And so then, I would say <clears throat> go with what we got now, because yeah. <laughs> they haven't invented that yet. Yeah. Um, and then if the time ever came, okay. we could always modify the regulation to say specific type right. and be grown outside. We have so much rural area. Mm -hmm. um, and then on 1249.7, this is not very clear. So does this mean your average Joe who owns a home can't grow in their home? 
Not on a commercial basis? Not on a commercial basis, but just a, like a normal basis? Private use? Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's a long So I wouldn't supplant, you know, where somebody has the right to grow their own in their no, house no, no. and use it. And, but, but this would be selling. You can't sell cannabis out of your house. You can't grow can't it out of your sell house. It. You, you can't sell it. You can't grow it. You can't grow it to sell it. Right. Yeah, so this sell. is just commercial. Okay. Do you want to clarify that by saying commercial? Yeah, because that's a little bit confusing. Yeah. yeah. I saw that too. That's a, that's a good point. You could put it in with your tomatoes. <laughs> you I, uh, I never thought. <laughs> we just don't want anybody in an upper room. Right. <laughs> if you could put except for um, personal consumption. But or that goes without just, saying, right? Because the yeah. regulations were prohibiting, so if we don't prohibit it, it's allowed, right? Yeah, and we don't need to worry about that because it's allowed by the state. Right. Okay. Yeah. So it's already. No, I mean, if you just say commercial, commercial. cannabis cultivation yeah. shall not be permitted in any residence in any zone district, that's commercial inventory. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have another suggestion for page four, mm -hmm. um, adding uh, section B under IV, stating <laughs> cultivation facilities shall be designed to not emit UV light outside of the facility. Oh, where are we? Um, so, top of page four, you have IV that we just spoke yep. about, and I propose adding section B underneath that, stating cultivation facilities shall be designed to not emit UV light outside of the facility. And then the um, hours of operation. I think these are really generous hours of operation. Mm. Um, Who, do we do we know? Is this the state recommendation? No. Oh. No. Is this based on um, alcohol sale hours? Mm, good question. Actually, this is just based on what other towns do. Okay. What are the alcohol hours of operation? I think it's 8 to 10 Monday through Saturday and 10 to 7 on Sundays. Okay, so then this would be mirroring alcohol operations. Almost. Might, might be Except 9 to Sunday. 7 on Sundays, but somewhere there. Okay. And does this, when we say retail facility, this just means someone can walk in and buy it. This doesn't mean we, we grow or manufacture. This is this just this is a, a retail store. Sales. Retail sales. You know, I mean, the hours are up to you. Right, right. You know, if it's too generous, 8 to 10 and 10 to 6, what would be acceptable? I think if it doesn't mirror the uh, operation of liquor stores, you might end up getting some pushback. Mm -hmm. Because they're kind of analogous. Mm -hmm. right? Sure. It might fit one way or the other, he either made these more liberal or more restrictive. Somebody's going to say, you know, I'll go a little easy. You're impacting <laughs> back my trade. Sure. But maybe it's a good idea just to confirm what the liquor store hours are, and then we can just mirror that just to make them consistent. Mm -hmm. I don't think we'd want to spend these. We have a lot of liquor stores. No, I'm not saying. Yeah. No, no. Yeah, I know. Hours. Right. I, I hear you. I'm thinking yeah. about it. <laughs> I still think one, I'm beginning to think, one good manufacturing, putting the commercial zones, no retail, just the start. Mm -hmm. Any other section that merits further discussion or review? Now, if we were to put a cap in, would the cap go in the definition section? No, definitions are just definitions. Okay. So would it go at the start of um, each district? 
saying how many are allowed in commercial district, how many. Yeah, or it, and if you put a limit on, I would suggest putting the limit within the, um, where it lists what's permitted. For example, a uh, cannabis production facility pursuant to section 12.49 of these regulations, um, five production facilities, no more than five production facilities shall be permitted in town. You know, something like that. Okay. So we could have the draft language of a number and then we can adjust that number. Or have a blank. Yeah. So no more than X and then we can fill that in after. Okay. Because yeah, if we are, if we determine to prohibit one type, then you might allow more of another type versus if we do allow all, you know, retail manufacturing growth, then maybe you're limiting each category. Okay, I like that. Page five, mm -hmm. halfway down the page, section C. Any cannabis use must have a 200% setback in a residential home or apartment, except for a caretaker apartment permitted in conjunction with a cannabis facility. And I was just going to add uh, that exists at the time of application. Just to clarify that the facility doesn't have to go away just because the house is constructed. The house would be prohibited. There's a facility there. So what you're saying is 200 foot setback from a residential home or apartment existing at the time of the cannabis use establishment. Also above that, the um, it states that uh, how that certain uses can't go in next to an establishment. Um, I don't see a need to restrict other use, legal uses going in next to a cannabis establishment. I think if they want to locate there, then there could be any reason why they can't. Mm. Yeah, especially the dependency and treatment center. Why would that be? Um, the police actually recommended a 1,500 foot separation as opposed to the 1,000. No, I'm not, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that if, if one of these uses would like to locate there, it's a good spot just because there's a, a cannabis establishment nearby. They, we shouldn't say, no, you can't go there because it's a cannabis establishment. Sort of like the, you know, yeah, I agree. It's a little bit of moral policing. Um, but uh, A, I like A, and I wouldn't mind putting that at 1,500 feet. Yeah, they have no problem because that's a kind of establishment looking to move in mm -hmm. to next to the day. Right. Mm -hmm. Stop that. Yeah, I like that. I, I see what you're saying, uh, Ryan, with that. I don't think you should, if people want to move there. But I think, but I think the role we have is to determine should they move there. So it's not that it's the personal preference of the commercial or the, the property, but we as a planning organization as well as a zoning organization, you know, if we're saying that they shouldn't be located within 1,500 feet of those things, then on the converse side, we shouldn't allow those things to move in after the fact because there's a reason why you wouldn't want these facilities next to those things. That's so I, I think having the regulation stated both ways is appropriate because it's maintaining the purpose. Like you do not want a cannabis facility right next to a school. So once the cannabis is established, you wouldn't let a school move in next to them because then you just defeated the purpose of what you said prior. So I, I disagree. I think that it makes sense to say you can't move in next to a school or a, you know any of these places, a church, you know, don't put your marijuana place there. But then I think once someone, let's pretend they go to a shopping mall and nothing, none of these things are there and they move in. 
and there's four other open shopping mall stores. I don't think it's uh, within our sort of purview to say, no, you can't. Like, I think if a daycare lady wants to move her kids next to a marijuana store, uh, she has a right to do that. I just don't think a marijuana store has the right to come next to the lady and, and put that there. But as part of our role, it is our role to determine what things fit together, because that's part of the planning process of our town. Going and commercial from industrial, because that is our role to determine what fits where in the best way possible. And part of the commission's charge also uh, is ensuring public health, safety, and welfare in the community. So, you know, a dependency treatment center. Mm -hmm. You know, the people who go to those facilities, you wouldn't want them right next to a facility that might be selling the products that they're dependent on. Um, that seems like the only thing that makes sense to put next to a little store. But, I mean, I hear you, and, and I think one of the things that supports your take on that is if a marijuana store opened up in, in a shopping mall that was empty, right, just an empty space, and there was multiple empty places, um, and then a school decided to move in, then why wouldn't someone who applies for a new application next to a school be approved? So I think in that, looking at it in that way, I think that that's, it's just odd what they picked there, right? Isn't that a little bit weird? Um, well, it's based off of the liquor um, regulation, I believe, right? Doesn't liquor also restrict yeah. Yeah. those same types of places and facilities? So you, go ahead. Not, not to this extent. There's, there's some more here than, than what liquor restricts. Mm -hmm. But do the liquor laws also restrict what can be built next to an existing liquor store? No, I don't believe so. I don't think so. So you could have a daycare next to a liquor store? Well, if the daycare came in later. Right. But so that's, yeah, that's sort of what... So the liquor regulation doesn't work in reverse. I think from a planning perspective, it makes sense. I'd be willing to keep it in there, and then we can see public comment and our own continuing discussion, as well as with our other board members. Because this is just a subcommittee. So when the full board meets, then that would give opportunity for the full board to give feedback and input. Now, it was mentioned the 1,000 feet, um, police had recommended 1,500 feet. So the question would be, should we change that to 1,500 feet or keep it within the 1,000? And if we do change it to 1,500, then I would assume, like I said, the reverse would be true. So then part B would also have to be modified to fit that 1,500 feet as well. To 1500. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> I, I like the 1500 feet. Okay, so we'll make that adjustment as well. They have to deal with something that used to be illegal. Sure. Yeah. So that's why I'm so curious yeah. as to what they're, they're saying about any of this. Sure. This just comes to mind though, um, <clears throat> uh, looking at B. Okay, so <clears throat> you can't put a cannabis facility within X number of feet of a number of use. Right? Mm -hmm. So, now you look, at, you look at B, somebody comes in and says, well, I've got this property and it's in a zone where this mm -hmm. use would otherwise be permitted mm -hmm. and now I can't put it there. they want to put a library or something. But the thing is, if it's, if it's, if it's a, I don't know. It, 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 uh, it holds hostage. It can be considered a tankage of, of sorts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's, um, it's like, what do you mean I can't build? Mm -hmm. Well, no, that's that's not a taking. Well, that would if, be a taking. if it's because there's other there's other uses that are appropriate in that zone that could go there. But that's just so happens this one wouldn't. Mm. Okay. I look at it. It's not like this is a bar where people are going there to consume. Right. Yeah. You know, it's more like a pharmacy where you go in yeah. and pick up your product to leave. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is odd. I think this is an overreach. I think B is an overreach. I just don't. There's. I just don't like it. I understand parts yeah. of it, but I think that it it holds people hostage. It holds property hostage. It holds 
square footage that could be used for commercial things. Uh, like I just feel like it's, it's up to people to decide if a daycare owner wants to go next door, so be it. If it, it's the parent's choice to let their kids go there or not. You know, I just don't feel like we should... Does some of, the, does some of this go back to state regulations? Pardon me? But it, it, is this just town or are these state these regulations? Are, these were um, adapted from town regulations. Like just all sorts of towns? Well, and I would be in favor of leaving it in the draft for the presentation to the public. Mm -hmm. And then see what falls out from that feedback and input. So I, I think I would just lean towards leaving it in the draft. And then once again, the public will have opportunity to review. The full board will have the opportunity to review. So I'd rather not cut a lot of stuff out of the draft until we, we get more feedback than just the four of us. How far is 1,500 feet? So are the industrial park properties, are they 1,500 feet apart? Well, I don't know, but it's roughly uh, not each lot. So I like, think of it this way, the Sterling, or is it Sterling? I can't remember. One of the industrial parks around town has a daycare center at it. Oh, yeah. our, our yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, like near the Wendy's. So like you want to know what your distance is because if a commercial person wants to come buy an industrial lot, you know, that would be great. Mm -hmm. uh, but if there's a daycare there, or, I mean like how far is 1,500 feet? What is the measurement? Is it door to door or property line to property line? Property line, property line. Okay. I thought it was the entrance to to the other use. Because that's a, like it's just some handicapping. So it also depends how the 1500 is measured. Is yeah. it by property line or is it door to door? Right, because then like, well, I, like if I... Mean, I is it after pro flux? Right. <laughs> but like, how annoying is that? Yeah. Right? Like, I don't want pro -flux. to be handicapped by a marijuana. Well, that was an so. example. Mm -hmm. If you want to leave it in for the meantime, I will also reach out to the PD again yeah. and ask their opinion. Absolutely. And I will also reach out to the state mm -hmm. and ask their opinion. Perfect. And like, like why, who came up with the list? I, I'd just be curious, like the list is... So it was pulled from other draft regulations. Okay, so just a variety so it's of... A, yes, we've been working on this for over a year, so... Yeah. So this has been compiling over time. So we have discretion to mix, match, modify. Mm -hmm. um, but I wouldn't want to parse it down too much. Yeah. You know, just leave the draft and then make adjustments as we get more input and feedback from the full board and the community. Yeah. Like the, the veterans home in Jewett City is right on top of the bar. And charitable institution, it's just, it doesn't make any sense why a charitable institution can't be next to a big project pin, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Like, there's, all these things are trying to do good things, right? Raise your kids, help people get off drugs. Like, it's just curious. The list is curious. So it's just an example. Yeah. It's just a draft. So we can modify and change this with full input. Right. I have a question on page five under uh, twelve point four nine point two section B two. Um, cannabis facilities shall be strictly prohibited in all residential zones and in highway commercial. Why would we want to limit highway <coughs> commercial? It, it just has all the um, everything that's allowed in commercial one and commercial two be allowed in highway commercial. So I don't know what the point is of uh, eliminating that zone. That's fine. Yeah, I have no objection to striking highway commercial from that section. And industrial park, that just means they're prohibited from that as well? Yeah. Yeah, that's that's our... That's Is that like our common? That's, that's a business park type thing. It's not a you know, production or production. Yeah. Um, page 6, 12.49.3. Do we want to do delivery services as a special permit? Transportation, I don't know if it really needs to be a special permit.
So this would not be the retail delivers, but rather they have other people pick up and. Mm -hmm. So are we talking like Grubhub, like their independent delivery? Yeah. So like Instacart people could mm -hmm. go to cannabis and pick up and delivery and do that kind of thing. So is that but what? But they need to be licensed through the state as well. Because the state that's, requires. Yeah, that's. So not just anybody can pick up and deliver no, marijuana not products. At all. Not at all. <laughs> so it wouldn't be like Grubhub and Instacart unless they had that additional license from the state of Connecticut. Like a delivery license for marijuana? Or it was a what kind of license do you need to transport it? The state licenses the transporters. This is for all aspects. This is for final product, this is for um, Marijuana being shipped to the production facilities and processing facilities. Oh, okay. So anytime it's transported, the, the company has to be licensed. So if they're already licensed by the state of Connecticut to deliver, the way the draft is written right now, that delivery service would also have to get a special permit from the town in order to deliver in the town plant. Right, just like any establishment would need a special permit before it could operate. They well, need a special permit. Based in town. If somebody's coming from out of town, they don't need a special permit to transport. So that's why it's domiciled within. So. So a delivery service that is in the town of Plainfield would need that special permit in order to deliver. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I would leave it. Yeah, I would leave it. By the way, to answer your early point, 1,500 feet is a little bit less than the third. Oh, okay, so it's quite long. Yeah, 0.28 miles. Okay, thank you. We want to have different size requirements for signage. So you're looking at 12.49.4? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, section C. Do they have a, like a maximum number of signs? So I see that they can have no more than one freestanding sign, but then on number two it says all additional signs. So is there unlimited signage? No, there's not. Um, so for freestanding signage, you're allowed one per business um, for a single business on a property. And with the, our current regulations for all of the uses, you're allowed that one. If you have a, a property of multiple businesses, you're allowed a structure. And that structure can exceed 150 square feet of signage to break up how you want. So establishments would still have to comply with whatever sign regulations exist for their zone, right? So then this subsection is more restrictive than the zone? Uh, in some cases, yes. So okay. right now we allow 50 square feet for a free sign that says 48. Mm -hmm. um, the 10 foot is standard for our other regulation. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's, it's less restrictive than some of this. So we would want to make that consistent? Yeah, I would say we just take signs right out of it so it falls under existing uses. So where it is more permissive, I would want it to match the zone. But is there a reason to have some things more restrictive? I think so. I mean, we're, we're looking at 48 square feet compared to the standard 50 square feet. Mm -hmm.
also where it could become an issue is if they move into an existing facility and yep. they have X amount of space to use. Mm -hmm. like, like issues. Well, I know three takes care of the multi tenant site. Mm -hmm. Oh, let me see. that is really specific to cannabis that we would need to state it. So all advertising for cannabis shall comply with the regulations specified in Public Act 21 dash. That would need to be stated, right? Mm -hmm. So that's a specific for cannabis. Um, is there any other part of it? So I think stating it has to comply with the zone that it's in. So the only other specific thing would be the no closer than 1,000 feet from. And do you want to make that 1,500 so you're making everything else 1,500? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Now with the other zones, we require that their signage be on their premise, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that, that goes for all zones. Okay. No, I like that. Can we, uh, as a town, and we're looking at signage, does that include billboards? Uh, well, we don't allow for billboards if they're currently existing. Um, they're able to remain. Okay, we can't have new billboards. Correct. But the billboards do change what they advertise. Uh, I don't know if we'll be able to restrict them. We can't restrict content. I don't know yeah, I don't think we could. I don't know if there's an exception for cannabis. Not to my knowledge. Unless it's in Public Act 21 1, Section 33. Right. Because <laughs> then it's. Because, like, we can't tell a company what color they could paint their building. Right. So I don't think we could tell them what they could. Uh, I'm sure historical zone. Unless yeah, you're unless you have a historic historic zone. district. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You have to have a local historic district or for that not dictate color. It is odd though that they can it is odd when you think about it. This is just me thinking about like a little bit of the legal part is that it's federally an illegal drug. And yet we're gonna be able to put a billboard up advertising for mm -hmm. sale. Isn't that a little odd? It is odd, right? Agreed and thankful we're not at the federal level. So, or the state level. Yeah. Um, Did you hear from Kelly at all? So, they're opening an operation, aren't they? Yeah. 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 Well, we were going to get their regulations, right? I have not gotten them yet. Oh, I have asked a few times. They've approved two so far. Right. I'd kind of like to know what's up with that. You know, what's mm -hmm. going on. So close. Can we jump also on page 6 to 12.49.5 notification to the state? Mm -hmm. Can we add at the very end, provided that this provision is required per state? Where are you? Um, page 6, right at the bottom. Notification to the state. Yeah. Uh, just add a sentence at the end, provided that this provision is required per state statute. <coughs> kind of thinking that it's going to go away in the future. Once the minute squares off, the state's not going to care what we do with regulations. So, but wouldn't we just strike yeah, it at that I time? Would, I would worry about it then. So just like we had to change the flood map to match, then we would just change this to match. Mm -hmm. A good point. The state will continue to change, so we'll have to make sure that we're changing with it. Page 7. 12.49.6, sale of cannabis products from the retailer or hybrid retailer at off-site events shall not be permitted. i just like to add within the town because... But these are town regulations. Right, but you know, 
it kind of sounds like that if there's a retailer in town, they can't sell a product outside of town. So, just so like the Jewett City Flea Market, if they wanted to pack their product up and go to the Jewett City Flea Market, that would be considered an off-site event, but it's not in our town, so we can't regulate exactly. right. off-site events. I know you just want to clarify that. Mm -hmm. It might make it easier for people to understand. It's pretty straightforward at that point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think it's going to hurt. So just off-site events in town. Okay. Okay. Any other items? Since the final draft will not also include the Section 6 powers and duties of the Zone Board of Appeals, I just put that in there to show that the Commission does have the latitude to prohibit the CBA from approving variances of the cannabis regulation. 